59 yard attempt going the same direction. This time has the distance and it is good. Brandon Aubrey's rookie campaign has been a story straight out of a fairy tale. Aubrey and good! Aubrey. Boy, he makes it look so simple, doesn't he? Aubrey, he's done it again! He shattered more than just records and is cementing himself as a top five kicker in the league. But just five years ago, this same guy was a retired professional soccer player who was pursuing a career as a software engineer. This is the inspiring and true story of one of the most unlikely rookie seasons in NFL history. When Brandon Opry joined the Cowboys this past offseason as an undrafted free agent, he was six years older than most of the other rookies in the building. In fact, at 28, he was the seventh oldest rookie of all time. And of the six players that were older than him in their rookie seasons, four were quarterbacks and the other two were punters from Australia. So so how is this guy so old? Well, Aubrey's story starts in the Dallas suburb of Plano, Texas, where he was a soccer star from a very young age. As a kid, Aubrey captained all of his prestigious club sides, and even though he always had a cannon for a leg, he never played a snap of high school football, opting to focus solely on soccer. And after his sophomore year, like most soccer phenoms do these days, he dropped out of traditional high school and enrolled in a soccer academy to prepare for the next level. Because unlike other sports in the US, soccer players can actually go pro at any age, something that has been commonplace abroad in South America and Europe, but it's just starting to catch steam here in the US. But in Aubrey's case, he actually chose to pursue the traditional college soccer route and took a full ride scholarship to play at one of the best programs in the NCAA. And it didn't take long for him to turn heads. He appeared in 13 games in his first season, logging more time than any other freshman on the team, proving right away that he belonged on the best team in the country as they went on to win the national championship that year. And in the three years that followed, all he did was rack up more starts, more wins, and all kinds of national accolades, culminating with his selection in the first round of the 2017 MLS Super Draft. Aubrey was taken 21st overall by then powerhouse Toronto FC. 21st pick of the first round of the 2017 MLS Super Draft, Toronto FC select from the University of Notre Dame, defender Brandon Aubrey. Uh, but I'm, I'm really happy to be at Toronto. I, they're an outstanding club. I've heard nothing but good things about them and obviously they're doing well so couldn't be happier. But as we talked about earlier, getting into professional soccer is quite a bit different than other American sports. And the MLS draft is a really good example of this. MLS teams primarily build up their talent pipelines in their academy programs. Future stars are being found at younger and younger ages. So when the draft comes around, it's not typically the time for your team to find its next superstar, but rather bolster your squad with college experienced players that were either late bloomers or maybe slipped through the youth development programs altogether. So as great as being a first round draft pick sounds, it was by no means a coronation for Aubrey. And he found that out pretty quickly as he was almost immediately sent down to Toronto's USL developmental squad, Toronto FC2, to get more consistent minutes and learn what it meant to be a professional athlete. But that journey didn't last long, as Toronto opted to release Aubrey after just one season with the team. But he wasn't going to give up that easily, and he was still determined to break into the ranks. He signed with another USL team in Bethlehem Steel FC in Pennsylvania, but ultimately experienced more of the same, as Bethlehem released him after just one season. So here he was, two years out of Notre Dame, a first round draft pick, struggling to even stay on a second league roster. Now he probably could have signed with another USL team or an even lower league to keep the dream alive, but he was also only making around $60,000 a year at this point. And there was a chance he might even earn less signing with a new club. So ultimately, Aubrey decided to hang up the cleats and put his Notre Dame computer science degree to use, taking a job as a software engineer back in his home state of Texas with GM Financial, something that you can still find on his LinkedIn page to this day. And that's how most stories would end. He was making a great paycheck, living a happy suburban life with his young family and watching football on the couch like the rest of us, tuning in most passionately each week for his childhood team, the Dallas Cowboys. But there was still a stirring in Aubrey. And even if he didn't acknowledge the athletic itch and claims that he never considered getting back into professional soccer, his wife Jen felt there was something still in the tank. And on one Sunday, as the two sat watching an NFL game together, something happened. After watching a kicker miss a field goal, she simply turned to Brandon and said, you could do that. Now, Aubrey hadn't kicked a football since his middle school days, where he was really just kicking the occasional extra point for his team. But he figured he might as well go out to a local field and see what he had in him. And it turns out that leg was still fully lethal, and it didn't take long for him to find a groove with the football. In fact, he impressed himself so much that he decided to go all in on becoming a place kicker, hiring renowned kicking coach Brian Egan to train him in his spare time. So he kept his day job as a software engineer, but spent mornings and nights grinding on his kicking game, hoping to figure out how he could break into the sport. Now remember, this is 2019. At this point, there were very few routes to the NFL outside of pro days in the NFL draft. Sure, there were mini camps he could try to get his way into, but there were no well-respected developmental leagues to help get himself on the map with some game tape. But to his luck, that was about to change, as both the XFL and the USFL were about to make comebacks. And one of these leagues would be the perfect 
perfect avenue for a long shot like Aubrey who just needed one chance to prove his worth. And in 2022, that is exactly what he got. A new era of pro football beginning in April. The USFL officially kicking off. Eight teams battling in 43 games. It's more football, more opportunity. It's good news. As he was drafted into a professional league for the second time in his life, when the Birmingham Stallions took him in the 32nd round of the inaugural USFL draft. Certainly not as flashy as his previous first round draft selection, but one that was going to end up being of far greater value to him. And once the USFL league got started that spring, Aubrey got back to doing exactly what he did at Notre Dame, kicking and winning. The Stallions won back-to-back -back titles while he was with the team, and he made an astounding 93% of his field goals, which was ultimately enough to catch the eye of some NFL scouts. And it was his hometown Cowboys who gave him his first shot at the big time, inviting Aubrey to preseason training camp before the 2023 season. Now, the Cowboys had just come off a roller coaster of a kicking season, which included Brett Maher going one for six on extra points in the playoffs. An extra point. He's missed three tonight, four in a row. And he has done it again. It was a concern that they needed addressing, and they wanted a long-term solution. And ultimately, the competition came down to Aubrey and another guy with limited professional experience, Tristan Vizcaino, who had already spent time with eight different organizations in his three-year career. The competition went back and forth, and both guys had their moments. But it came to a climax before their second preseason game when Mike McCarthy held a simulated game situation for the two kickers. And Aubrey only made one out of three of his kicks in the high-pressure situation. But Vizcaino missed all three, and the Cowboys released him. Now, at that point, it seemed like the Cowboys would need to start looking looking for a veteran to bring in to back up or even challenge Aubrey. But in their last preseason game, he settled the organization's collective nerves, nailing a 59-yarder against the Raiders. Clear. This time, has the distance, and it is good. 59 yards. The job was his, but like any rookie, he was going to have to prove it every week, and things could not have gotten off to a worse start. In the opener against the Giants, Aubrey missed his very first NFL extra point attempt, but somehow that moment unlocked him. That game, he went on to hit two field goals, and from there, there was no shaking his consistency. Each week was make after make after make. And finally, after a few weeks of being perfect from the place, the media buzz began and they began to talk about records. Most specifically, the record for the most consecutive field goal makes to start a career, which was 18. Now keep in mind, this does not include extra points. So these are kicks from all distances and Aubrey was taking plenty of deep ones. But by week eight, he hit number 19 out of 19, breaking the all-time record. And in hindsight, that was just the beginning. Aubrey went on to hit 35 straight field goals to start his career, only missing in week 18 when a kick was actually blocked. He was never going to stay perfect forever, and he will certainly miss more kicks down the line. But nobody will argue with you now that he's finally nailed his shot. And when you factor in the journey that it took for him to get here, this might be one of the best stories in NFL history.